In modern AI, SEC2SEC models are designed to convert sequences from one domain to sequences in another domain. They can handle input and output sequences of different lengths, which is essential in tasks like machine translation, where sentences vary in length. The underlying architecture used in SEC2SEC models is often called an encoder-decoder model. Basically, the encoder reads and processes the input sequence to produce a fixed length context vector or a sequence of vectors or some kind of encoded information that summarizes the input. The decoder takes the encoded vector or the context vector and generates the output sequence, generally one element at a time. As an example, in machine translation, you provide an English sentence as the input. The sentence is encoded into a context vector. The decoder knows how to convert the encoded context vector to a Spanish sentence. The encoder and the decoder can be a recurrent neural network or a variant of recurrent neural network such as LSTM. Here we have an encoder-decoder architecture using LSTM for machine translation. These four LSTM blocks are actually just one cell. It is showing the unfolded version for the sentence, where do you live? That is the output hidden state and the cell state of where would be fed back into the LSTM when the word do is an input for the LSTM. Also, the cell state and the hidden state output of the word do will be used for the next iteration of the LSTM when the input word is you, so and so forth. So the final state vector here or the context vector here is actually a combination of the final cell state output and the hidden state output for the LSTM that received the input where do you live in a sequence. This context size or this state vector is a fixed length vector for any input sentence of any length. So this state vector is of a fixed length. The decoder knows how to decode using this starting. So in a typical LSTM-based encoder-decoder architecture, the encoder's final hidden state and final cell state are used to initialize the decoder's hidden state and the cell state. That is the encoder's final hidden and cell states together form the context for the decoder. So this word state is referring to the context vector for the decoder. Notice that in the decoder too, we have the unfolded version of LSTM shown here, where we have the Spanish translation of the English sentence, where do you live? The Spanish translation is en donde vives. Notice that the first input word is not n. This is start of the sequence. So this is a symbol or this is a token that indicates that we are going to start for this given input in the encoder. So the decoder can start predicting what is the next word given this context vector. Also here, this end within this angle brackets indicate the end of sequence. So in this example, the encoder is fed where do you live, against which the decoder is given the start token, against which consecutively in multiple iterations, the decoder should generate n, donde, vives, and end. Notice that in those iterations, here we are showing that the predicted word after the first iteration is fed back as an input to the next iteration of the LSTM. In this figure, we are mostly demonstrating the inference part of encoder-decoder, because during inference, we really don't know what the translation should be. We are relying on the output of the LSTM. Now, the decoder is generally trained in a manner known as teacher forcing. This means that at each time step, the decoder is fed the correct output from the previous time step to help it predict the next token well. In the previous time step, the predicted word can be incorrect. Whatever the predicted word is, that would help compute the loss of that part of the prediction, but we don't want the incorrect prediction to be propagated in the upcoming iterations. That is why a teacher is forcing the expected target of the previous time step to become the input 
of the next time step instead of directly using the predicted word from the previous time step. Here against the start of a sequence, we expected that n will be produced. Even if the predicted word is not n, we are feeding n for the next input. Notice that we can feed this n only during training time because we know what the expected output is from the training data. Similarly, for the word n, whatever the predicted output is, we use the expected target word donde as the input for the next iteration of the LSTM cell. So this overall process is called teacher forcing. It is something like a teacher forces the model to learn correctly, even if the model is making mistakes in the previous iteration. The hope is that the model will see correct input more and keep learning. Also, any prediction error will not propagate it to the next iterations of the LSTM. During inference or testing, teacher forcing is not possible because the expected target is not available during inference. The purpose of inference is to figure out what the translation is. If we already know the translation, then there is no point of inference. So here, this part is demonstrating the inference situation. The teacher forcing part is here which is actually the training stage of the encoder decoder so in teacher forcing the target words become input for the next step without teacher forcing during inference the predicted word becomes an input for the next step now let us discuss some pros and cons of teacher forcing. In terms of advantages, teacher forcing helps the model converge faster during training because it provides the correct input at each step. This reduces the chances of compounding errors where a mistake made early in the sequence influences subsequent predictions. That is, teacher forcing reduces error accumulation. Also, teacher forcing helps learning long dependencies. For long sequences, teacher forcing assures that the model sees the correct context at each step, which helps the model learn relationships and dependencies across long distances in the sequence. There are disadvantages of teacher forcing as well. One of the major downside of teacher forcing is exposure bias. During training, the model always sees the correct input at each step, but during inference, which is the real world EU, it has to rely on its own prediction as inputs. This discrepancy can cause the model to perform poorly during inference because it has never learned to recover from its own mistakes. So practically that leads to over-reliance on ground truth during training time, which might become an issue during the inference time, especially when there are too many mistakes or when there are noisy inputs. As a mitigation, both teacher forcing and no teacher forcing can be used in training. That means for one translation you use teacher forcing during training, for the same translation you don't use teacher forcing, so the decoder can start learning the correct ones as well as incorrect predictions. The previous example that we used was on machine translation. Here is an example of chats. For the encoder input, if we provide where do you live, we can train a decoder which will learn that the answer can be something like start of the sequence, I live in Texas, end of the sequence. Another similar example can be text summarization. Given a long text as input in the encoder, we can train a decoder to create a summarization of that text. The encoder decoder architecture is a powerful concept. It revolutionized the modern artificial intelligence in many ways, as you can imagine. With LSTM-based encoder decoder mechanism, the decoder only relies on the context vector that is finally produced by the encoder. For long sequences in the encoder, the context vector might not be able to capture all the intricacies of the input. When the decoder is generating a word, it could perform better if we could feed the decoder additional context about some relevant words from the encoder. This concept is known as attention mechanism, a topic for the future. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon in another video.